whenever you're doing anything in your practice, think who, not you. So Mm -hmm. who else can do this? I know when I started my business, the first person I hired was a bookkeeper. Like I can do bookkeeping and I can do taxes, but I don't want to. And it's really Mm -hmm. not the best use of my time. This episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Be sure and check them out and be sure and use the promo code Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. A little over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot and most of it the hard way. And I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. and welcome to the podcast. This is Gordon and this is episode number 302 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. So glad you've joined me and hope you'll come back for more and take time to follow us and or subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it. Looking forward to you hearing my conversation with Jeff Russell in this particular episode. And one of the things that I've, you know, learned over the years, especially in doing consulting with other practitioners and helping people, you know, build their practices and grow their practices, is um, we can tend to do too much ourselves, especially as we grow. And so our conversation today, my conversation with Jeff is kind of along those lines of just really thinking about firing yourself, so to speak, as he puts it. So I'm looking forward to you hearing from Jeff. Jeff has um, got some great Great information, and I think you're going to enjoy that conversation. Um, Also, real quickly before we get to my conversation with Jeff, the Instagram templates that we put together with the help of my assistant, Rachel, actually, she gets all the credit for doing this. But anyway, there are a set of templates that you can use in Canva to um, have some ready-made Instagram posts so that you don't have to put a lot of work into it. All you really have to do is just add your logo or add your special touch to them, but it's 50 templates and you can download or get access to the link for the templates uh, by just going to practiceoftherapy.com slash insta templates. And uh, it's a good deal. They're only 22 bucks to get the whole package there. And it's handled through our Gumroad platform. But uh, again, practiceoftherapy.com slash insta templates. So check those out. And also, as we move towards the holiday season and we get into that, you're probably going to be thinking about maybe some gifts for your staff if you're in a group practice like me, uh, and maybe some other things that you might want to give as gifts. Uh, But I would love for you to go and check out my friend Ashley's uh, new Etsy store, and you can get to it by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash mental health wear. And one of the things that she is busy doing right now is getting together some ornament, Christmas ornaments or holiday ornaments. Also, there's some Halloween uh, stuff that's there, but all of it can be personalized. And so if you are interested in getting some gifts for your staff or for other people that you would want personalized, be sure and check it out. And you can go to practiceoftherapy.com slash mental health wear, and that'll get you to her Etsy page. And you can also also reach out to me and I'll help you be ha- happy to get you connected with her. And also here real quickly before we get to my conversation with Jeff, I'd love for you to hear from one of the members of the Sitecraft Network, along with our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. 
Hey there. Are you searching for answers and clarity on your mental health journey? Well, I've got the podcast just for you. Welcome to Finding Your Way Through Therapy, a podcast that's like having a heartfelt conversation with a trusted friend and who understands what you're going through. I'm your host, Steve Bisa, a therapist and proud member of the PsychCraft Network. Finding Your Way Through Therapy is a safe space where we openly explore the emotional complexities of mental health. From busting common myths to sharing actionable advice, we'll navigate this journey together through solo episodes as well as special guests. Discover your inner strength, resilience, and hope as we explore topics like self-care, building healthy relationship, cognitive behavioral therapy, and overcoming challenges. You'll come away with a renewed sense of self and the tools to create a life filled with fulfillment and well-being. So join me on finding your way through therapy as we become your companion on this deeply personal journey. I am part of the PsychCraft Network and truly enjoy all the episodes. And back to your regular scheduled programming. Have you ever wished your private practice could run as smoothly as a well-oiled machine? Well, look no further because Therapy Notes is here to revolutionize your practice. Therapy Notes is the complete practice management system you've been dreaming of. With everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with clients remotely, create rich documentation, and handle insurance billing, it's your secret weapon for a smoother practice. And the best part? It's accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Yep, even on the go. Imagine having more time for what truly matters, your clients. It's like having an extra set of hands, but digital. And here's the kicker. It's the very EHR Gordon relies on in his own practice. So, you know, it's the real deal. Say goodbye to paperwork nightmares and hello to more time and better quality care. Check out Therapy Notes today at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. Oh, and don't forget to use the promo code GORDON to get two months free. That's practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes with the promo code GORDON. Enjoy the show. Well, hello, folks, and welcome again to the podcast. And so glad for you to get to meet today, Jeff Russell. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. It's awesome to be here. Yes. So as I start with most everyone, why don't you tell folks a little bit more about yourself and how you've landed where you've landed? Well, first of all, I want to be clear. I did not come from money. My mm-hmm. dad was in the Army. I was an Army brat, moved around every three years. You know, for us, big five-star dining was going to the next town that had a McDonald's. So okay. now, fast forward, right? I have a family trust, a family office. I have five companies. And the amazing thing is I don't work more than 10 days a month, right? And uh-huh. so this is almost the 20 years to get to today or the last mm-hmm. couple of years. And so, and one of those businesses was a uh, medical office. So we did aesthetic medicine. And so my partner and I, we started that 11 years ago and it's going strong. And so I do understand the healthcare space. And another one of my businesses is training physicians how to add aesthetic medicine to their practice. And so I've taught over 15,000 physicians how to do that in the last 17 years. So where it started was, yeah, I went to college and I got a degree in computer science. So I am doing mm-hmm. absolutely nothing that I was trained to do, like uh, many other people. Right. Uh, I certainly take some of the, the coding, the logical problem solving, the processes I take from those college days. As a college graduate, I did what I'm supposed to do, and that's go work for a big Fortune 100 company in America. So I went to work for Xerox, which in the late 80s was a fun time, right? Because Xerox is where the GUI was created, where Mm -hmm. the mouse was created. You know, many people don't even know who Xerox is today. So, but we're using their products every day. Yeah. 
Uh Um, and then, and I did that for about 10 years and then I was really, um, what I like to call unhirable. Uh, I, I never did a bad job, so I never got fired, but I did get packaged out and, and laid off and got that letter. And, and one of those letters was, they gave me a year salary and they gave Mm -hmm. me some counseling. And so I did all the the asset personality assessments like Myers Briggs and all those those guys, and then I also did some counseling. And one of the counselors told me, you know, Jeff, you've been kind of doing this employee thing for a long time. I don't think you're set out to be an employee. I think you're set mm-hmm. up to be a business owner. I'm like, oh, really? I didn't think that was an option because I didn't mm-hmm. know how to do that. Right. Right. Yeah, right. they don't teach you how to be a business owner in college. And when your your parents are not business owners, right? You don't really mm-hmm. learn that from your family. And so I decided to buy into a, a business opportunity where I learned how to become a leasing broker. So I spent ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars of my part of my year salary that I mm-hmm. was given, and I did that. And then I found myself in the medical side of things. So I finance mm-hmm. a lot of medical equipment. And then mm-hmm. a lot of those doctors were asking me, well, how do you set up and run a practice? I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. I have a, you know, I have a computer science degree. I'm a good talker. I know finance. So I would tell them, go talk to these other doctors, you know, they and learn from them because they're doing, they're really successful. After mm-hmm. a couple of years of that, those other doctors are like, Jeff, stop sending people. Because I am too busy for that. And Uh so I actually interviewed them and created an entire training program on how to help the doctors do that. And one of the challenges is when you look at business failures, it's almost always about the money. It's never Mm -hmm. really about the, 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 the desire of the owner to do a good job and help people. And mm-hmm. that's one of the things I love about working in healthcare is that most physicians and healthcare providers go into medicine to help people. And mm-hmm. it's something that really resonated with me. I'm like, yeah, I want to help people the way I can. And so I obviously don't have a medical degree and can do anything medical, but I know the business. I know Mm -hmm. how to bring people in. I know how to set up processes and systems so that I don't have to be there. And right from the very beginning, I taught the physicians, this is what you have to do. You always have to think about who can do this procedure, not you. So the first Mm -hmm. concept I, you know, I want to kind of give to your listeners is whenever you're doing anything in your practice, think who, not you. So Mm -hmm. who else can do this? I know when I started my business, the first person I hired was a bookkeeper. Like I can do bookkeeping and I can do taxes, but I don't want to. And it's really Mm -hmm. not the best use of my time. And so always think about who can do this better. You can do it really well, but if you don't get out of your own way and start letting other people do that, then you're just going to have that challenge all the time. So Mm. when we teach physicians, we do combination of clinical and business together. So it's kind of an experiential learning environment where you're actually Mm -hmm. experiencing it. I want them in a clinic doing hands-on. And then while we're doing that, we're, this is how you talk to a patient. Here's how you, here's the business side of it so that they kind of Mm -hmm. understand those. And, you know, physicians and providers are busy. So one Mm -hmm. of the things I know this is going to take a lot of time and you're not going to like it up front, but you really have to document your processes from the Mm -hmm. time a patient calls in to the time when they actually walk in how you see them, how you book their next appointment, all of that really has to be written down. And it takes a lot of time up front, but where it's going to save you is when you go and you hire your receptionist or your virtual person to kind of manage your clinic, they're going to have a manual that they will just be able to read down and understand Mm -hmm. what to do. So I I was a bit OCD. So I was always, I was good at writing the stuff down. So it wasn't hard for me, but it may be for other people. Right. Well, it's interesting that that whole thing, because I was doing some consulting with someone, I think it was just yesterday. And and that's exactly what we were talking about is 
particularly for for those private practice owners out there that might be moving from having a, a solo practice to a group practice as a solo solo entrepreneur solo practice owner we we do a lot of things day in and day out and we just know how to do it and we don't really think about okay if i had somebody else to do it how would i teach them to do it and that that's exactly what i suggested to them to do is okay think about what you do from the time you get a client to call to the time that you discharge them is is map out all the steps so that you can begin to put your systems and processes in place because that's that that's you're you're are really you're talking about some good stuff here Jeff in that I think one of the mistakes that a lot of practice owners make is they hang on to the bootstrapping too long and they and they don't outsource soon enough they don't they they miss a lot of low hanging fruit by not outsourcing things yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I'm absolutely guilty of this, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you are too, you're normal, right? So it's right, not like right. everybody, you've got to learn this. And sometimes you you can't see what's over the hill and you just seem to get steeper and steeper and you mm-hmm. just don't want to go there. But trust me, if you start letting go of the administrative, the the boring stuff, the stuff that someone else can do easily and probably would enjoy it more than you, mm-hmm. you want to certainly let that go. And so as I, you know, started adding businesses and for my practice, for example, I had a full-time job, my partner had a full-time job, and then we're opening up a new practice. It's like, okay, who's, who's going to be here? So when we designed that practice, we designed it to run without us. So we use those operating manuals that we had, and then we hired our first person. And, you know, Mm -hmm. our first person, we just started with one. So you may start with a person half time, maybe 20 hours a week. It doesn't have to be a full time person, right? But someone to answer the phones, to make sure the practice is all set up and ready for you. And then we hired when that person was too busy, we hired another person. Mm -hmm. So always think, is there an extender that can do things right? So and, and group consultations and things like that as well. And so then all of a sudden, so I, again, I did this because we were busy with full-time jobs. I didn't think anything of it, but when I look back, it's like, wow, that really set us up because now Mm -hmm. we have five full-time people there and they're seeing patients all day while my partner and I are not in the clinic at all. I work maybe an hour or two a month in the clinic and she works maybe two, three hours a month in the clinic. So very limited time and she's doing what she enjoys doing. So I always think, take what you're doing now and throw out conventional and the way you've done it and think how what would this look like if i only worked 5 days a month mm-hmm. right what would have to change because sometimes we just kind of have to think outside the box to think to come up with solutions and so when you just say what happens if you're disabled and you cannot work okay what what how are you going to set your practice up right? To run without you. Are you going to do online? Are you going to do a self thing? Are you going to bring in a partner, a junior partner or Mm -hmm. another partner? Like you have to think about these things and what you would do. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. One, one of the things that I hear from people a good bit is that they, in thinking about like the example you gave of, of hiring a, an administrative person or a virtual assistant or however it looks for, for a particular practice, they think of, they think, well, I can't afford that. It's, it's not, I'm not going to be able to pay them. But the truth of the matter is, and I'd love to get your, your thoughts on this, is that by not doing that, you end up making less money. Absolutely. And, mm-hmm. and I had that same mental block that you're just discussing. Absolutely. I was the one I answered the calls. I did the events. I created the materials because I have those 
you know, I don't know, I'm not a clinician, but I think I have some variant of OCD. So I like to keep control mm -hmm. over everything. Uh -huh. And so it was probably more difficult for me than many people to kind of let go. And what you have to look at is this is you look at how much money you're making in a year or how much you want to make. So maybe you're making 150,000, maybe you want to make 250,000 or 500,000. You divide that by 2000 because that's how many hours are in a year. That's your hourly rate and what you're worth. If I can hire anyone to do it for less than that, they're doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're, you have to look at your value. Your value may end up being a hundred dollars an hour. So if you can hire someone for $15 an hour to do basic admin or bookkeeping, then why aren't you doing that? And many of you, like, I don't clean my pool. I don't clean, you do my grass or landscaping. I don't clean my house. Like, I, I just don't enjoy doing those things. So mm -hmm. there's people that do them for a lot less and they actually enjoy doing them. So I'm enabling uh -huh. these people to have some joy as well. So really, really think about that. You you have to look at what you do really well and what makes you the most money and focus in on that. Right. Um, and I think that's a big first step is to kind of change, you know, don't look at this $15 an hour person as an expense, look at them. Well, I make 60, 70, a hundred an hour. They're actually making me now I can see two patients instead of just one patient. Right. Right. And that's a, that's exactly the way I, I encourage people to think about it because, you know, you know, our, in our profession, in the same way with any medical profession, is that for the professional, if you're not in front of the patient or in front of the, the client, you're not going to be making any money. And so if you're spending all your time doing administrative stuff, which, yeah, that part's important, is, you know, as far as the collections and all that sort of thing, but really, you've got to have that other person in front of you. And so, like you said, if you're, you know, if you're charging $100 an hour for your services and you could pay somebody $30 an hour to answer the phone and book other people, that frees you up. And so it absolutely pays for itself. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. Uh, the other thing then I want you to start to think about is how can I add ancillary services to the practice that don't require you and mm -hmm. you can bring in somebody more inexpensive to do that so for mm -hmm. the aesthetic side of things like doing botox and doing microdermabrasion and peels the physician doesn't have to do any of that stuff that's an extender doing it so mm -hmm. in with therapists now think about okay so what do you want to add maybe be maybe you want to add um you know the blue light therapy where people kind of lie down and they have the the light on them that gives them the you know helps with their mental health because i'm seeing a big crossover here too right mm -hmm. we're seeing supplementation we're seeing peptides we're seeing a lot of things people are now thinking okay, I look good from the outside because I can do this aesthetic stuff, but I don't feel good inside. So mm -hmm. how can I, how can I make that? So I, I see aging really combining the in and out in the next decade for yeah. sure. And there's a lot of great things happening. So what else can you, you know, hire? So always look out when you're visiting another city or going to a trade show, look at those procedures that don't require you to legally mm -hmm. do right yeah. and bring in someone to do that that's how you really start to get one plus one equals five right yeah. is when you're able to have other people seeing patients that don't require you to be there mm -hmm. so really and you probably have some suggestions as well gordon and, and yeah. those type of ancillary things but right. always be thinking right right i think and that's a that's an important point because d depending on you know, how you got your practice set up, there is a ceiling, kind of a, a glass ceiling to the number of people, number of patients that you can actually see. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, there's only so much time in the day and only so many slots that you're capable of seeing folks. And so you're exactly right, looking for ways to diversify your income by going from the one-to-one -one way of providing services to the one-to-many. One but also, you know, what one idea as you were talking about, you know, kind of medical 
kinds of things. But in our in our world, one idea that I've heard thrown around and we're playing with it here in my own practice is for, for folks that maybe work with like teens, you know, one of the things that is really helpful for teens is learning emotion coping skills, particularly, you know, if they're, you know, in high school, junior high, that's a, a volatile time for any young person. And so learning how to navigate the emotions of all of that is an is an important skill for them to learn. Well, you could you could hire an intern that could teach them that in a group setting. And so and then be able to to charge for that. And so yeah, that's just one little idea of what you're what you're talking about in kind of the mental health field context. Yeah, no, that's a great suggestion for sure. Always think about how you can do, like you said, the one to many or having mm-hmm. someone else do them and leveraging yeah. the technology too, right? So maybe you have like a monthly subscription program where mm-hmm. you have a group call, right, on Zoom or another mm-hmm. technology where people can kind of check in, you can ask questions. We That's what we do often with the aesthetic side. We all have, it may be inexpensive. It could be $199 or $99 a month. And often you can include maybe some supplements that you believe in, right? You know, maybe you're into vitamin Mm -hmm. D or whatever, B12, or, you know, you're starting to see that combination in there as well. That, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a package that includes that. And if you want to, you can come in for unlimited support or a a monthly Zoom call where you can ask specific questions and other people have them as well. So always just try, push you to think outside the box and look in different industries, like how do dentists do it? How Mm -hmm. do other people do it in different industries? How does the self-help do it, right? In their Mm -hmm. industry, right? They have masterminds and monthly things and a course that may be available. Mm -hmm. So really take examples from other industries as well to help you. Yeah, I know one one area that's a real kind of a, a lot of buzz around and a lot of kind of a hot topic, so to speak, is moving from traditional therapy type of model to a life coaching model of helping people solve specific problems, which doesn't necessarily is different than doing therapy with folks, but really is more about helping people problem solve and be able to just learn some new things around a particular issue. So that's that's another little idea that a lot of people are are playing around with. So and you know that's a great idea, Gordon. I love that. And when I'm look thinking of that, you always want to also think back of who your patients are. Do you have the right patients in your practice? Do you mm-hmm. have the ones that you enjoy seeing and helping or that they drain you? And so like for this life coaching, that's their certain type of patient. And mm-hmm. if that's the type of program you want to offer, then I need you to start thinking about who you have in your practice and who you want in your practice. That would be the ideal patient for that product or service that you offer. Yes. You know, because sometimes who you have is not going to get you where you want to go. Right. So it's a good idea to kind of know that. That's (laughs) a very good point. It is a very good point. So, well, Jeff, to switch gears a little bit, tell folks a little more about your book and those kinds of things. Yeah. So I wrote Fire Yourself First. It came out in April of this year. And my background really is working in the healthcare side of things. So a lot of this, even though it's meant for any business owner, you have to think of your practice as a small business. Mm -hmm. And you know what? A lot of the tips and strategies you see out there are for big businesses, right? Like Walmart or Amazon. Well, that doesn't translate if there's three or four of you in your practice. And so I really honed all those tips to have small, efficient teams. And the four steps that we have in there is how to basically unchain yourself from your practice. And Mm -hmm. first thing is your personal purpose. So really think about that, where you want to go. The second one is hiring the right people. I'll tell you the most difficult part of any Mm -hmm. business anywhere, doesn't matter if you're in healthcare or real estate or whatever, is hiring the right people. And I actually have an 11-step hiring process because I've hired so many 
I hired amazing A players and I hired like psychopaths, right? Like, so <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> clinical here. Like, I don't know why, because they're the ones you have to watch out for because they know how to manipulate the system, hiring system better than anyone. Now, your listeners probably have an extra hand up on identifying those, but the 11 steps. And then the other mm-hmm. one is you, the third step is dashboards, right? You got to know what your key mm-hmm. numbers are. I'm not an accountant by trade. My bookkeeper sends me my numbers once a month. I know what my profit is. I know how much I spend on expenses and how much I'm bringing in. You really have to know two or three key numbers. And mm-hmm. the fourth one is, okay, what are you going to do next? And mm-hmm. So you have to really think about five years from now, where do you want to be? And then you start going backward to start building the systems and processes and hiring the right people to get you there. Mm -hmm. If you go to my website, fireyourselffirst.com, your listeners can actually download my 11-step hiring guide. Mm -hmm. So if they want to start using that, I don't offer coaching. I don't do masterminds. I have nothing. Like I really wrote this book to give back. I spend Mm -hmm. most of my time now in my investment side and my family office, and I'm looking at real estate investments and other stuff. And so I look back and I'm like, I've got all these other business running on autopilot. So Mm -hmm. why not kind of teach people? Because I'll tell you the stress you go through when you're the only one, right? It's so much easier to sleep at night when you have a team in place that is really batteries included, fully charged, ready to come to work and do that. And so the book is really just to help providers and you'll see a lot of healthcare examples in the book as well. And -hmm. if you want more information on the book, it's fireyourselffirst.com and there's links to Amazon or or Barnes and Noble, wherever you like, and Mm -hmm. a ton of free resources. I also also have a weekly Fire Yourself Fridays where I give you a little Mm -hmm. tip I was just writing a blog today about the four agreements. And, you know, Mm -hmm. there's some of these books that we can take a look at those simple things. We just kind of lose ourselves, right? Being impeccable with our word. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's, that was a great read, right? So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. And we'll, we'll have links in the show notes and the show summary for folks to find all of that easily. So, well, Jeff, I would be respectful of your time. What, what sort of, parting thoughts might you have for our listeners? You know, the big thing is if you're struggling, you're not sure where to go next, but you know, you don't want to be doing what you're doing. You're normal, right? So Mm -hmm. I don't want you to think you're just, yeah, you're, you're, you don't, there is a way you have to start with one thing. And what's the one thing that you can start with today that'll get you to a practice that runs without you where you're not a critical part of it and just Mm -hmm. make that one change. Yeah, that's great advice. Great advice. Well, Jeff, I appreciate you being on the podcast, and hopefully we'll have another conversation here in the future. Again, a big thanks to Jeff for joining me on the podcast. And hopefully this has given you a lot to think about. You know, I think one of the things that holds us back a lot of times is just our mindset around how we do things. We we tend to do things the same way. And as that old adage or uh, Einstein quote quote that uh, gets thrown around is uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And so hopefully this has given you some food for thought and just about how you manage your time and how you kind of invest in your practice, not only with your time, but also your resources, other resources. So um, again, check out Jeff's things by uh, checking out the show notes here and getting the links to everything. And also before we go, I'd love to thank again, our sponsor therapy notes. They are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers. They're who I use in my practice and absolutely love all the features and things that they keep adding. And the support that they give is really second to none. I really couldn't operate my practice without them. And it's something that is used day in and day out in our practice. And I know my 
my staff enjoys using that platform as well. So be sure and check it out, practiceatherapy.com slash therapy notes, and be sure and use the promo code, just Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N. And also check out the um, Instagram templates. You can get to them by going to practiceoftherapy.com Insta templates, and you can find out about those. And I think they will be a good, easy resource for you to tap into. And also check out Mental Health Wares. Um, and you can get to that by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash mental health wear. And that'll get you over to my friend Ashley's Etsy store, where she's got just tons of great um swag items and t-shirts and uh, ornaments and all other kinds of things that um, you can give as gifts or just use for yourself. So be sure and check that out. And again, folks, thanks for joining me. Do take time to follow us wherever you might be listening to the podcast. And thanks for being with me on this journey. I'm looking forward to a lot of new episodes ahead. We've got a lot in the queue here. So take care and we'll be with you again next week. You've been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. You can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting psychcraftnetwork.com. And if you haven't done so already, please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide, along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal, accounting, or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.